Hey guys, and welcome back to Rollercoast Tycoon 3. Today I'm doing something which I normally never even do, which is making a station before I actually make the coaster itself, or even the surrounding area. And there is a pretty good reason why I want to make the station first, which is the fact that this station is going to serve as the major weenie of the German area, to put it into Walt Disney's terms. And I think I actually sort of got that term from King RCT3 a long time ago and I never really gave him credit for it so quick shout out to King RCT3 but yeah a weenie is basically that really big structure in any part of a theme park or the theme park as a whole that really draws you toward it and it can be really large or just be a really beautiful structure but it's sort of visible from a larger area of the park and really draws you towards some certain area and really serves almost as a centerpiece of a given theme. And for Germany, I wanted to make it this station and actually make it a very much decorated station and go way um, beyond what I normally just do with stations. Uh, so it's sort of fulfilling a double role of not just being quite important as a loading and unloading place for the coaster itself, but also the major part of scenery for this part of the park. And to basically talk about what type of building I want to make the station into. It's mostly inspired by a small palace in a park called Theresienstein. Which is where most of the inspiration is from. But it also really generally looks a lot like Bavarian buildings in general and castles. And you know I might draw quite a bit from Neuschwanstein in this entire part of the park as well. But yeah, the idea in general is it's going to be a almost palace, uh, almost palace-ish building with a lot of timber works and sort of a lot of details, especially on the tower. And that's basically the way in which I want to make this work with the surrounding area. And in front of it, I want to have this larger plaza, which might also kind of be like a beer garden and have some tables over there and a small restaurant where people can drink beer in true German fashion, I suppose, and eat sausages and uh, sauerkraut. That is terribly stereotypical. I am sorry about that. But yeah, that's the general idea for this area at least. And for a change, I actually did want to also add some very simple interior in the station. And obviously, before you actually finish the station itself, it's a lot easier to place every part of the shape except for the roof, just to be able to place some simple interiors in. And in this case, I really didn't want to do too much, especially since I barely have any experience with interiors. I usually skip them, but of course, given that this is a station, that's some extra need to actually get some good interiors in. And since it's such an important station as well, I really just figured might do it right now already before I already cover it up with all the roofs that I want to have over this thing. Because I actually do want to have a double roof for this building, which means that I want to have a lower layer of wood and above that have the actual roof, which is going to be tiled again because I can't quite as much as I would like to get the medieval tiled roof that you find often in Bavaria in because it just doesn't exist in the game. Now what you may already sort of note in the shape of the building is that it's very much a building which has a front and a back. It's, it's no real excuse to not pay any attention to the back. I want to detail the back just as much as the front, but it's really a building which has a facade near the front where that uh, small plaza is going to be as well. So the large one by one tower on the corner is going to be the main tower and spire of the building. And this small sort of protrusion on the front over here will just be a small roof with a window and a balcony. Just to have that decoration on the front as well. And then the stone with the arches underneath it will just be a small walkway to add some more detail and depth to the building. When you're looking at it from the front, of course. So yeah, this is where I wanted to add the roof within a roof idea. It's not typical of Germany at all, and realistically, it's really only common in many Asian cultures, as for example, Japan. But I really wanted to have it in this case, since 
The issue is with some of the roofs in Rollercoaster Coon 3, they have the same texture on the top of them as on the bottom, and I didn't really want to look at tiled um, roofs from the bottom of this thing, and would much rather just have some wood underneath it, so that's why I did want to add a double roof. So yeah, it's purely just to make the interior look a little bit better, but it's not actually there for any specific purposes otherwise. And just as a quick tip, I guess, uh, when it comes to making buildings in Rollercoaster Second 3, you'll note that especially for this building, I placed all of the walls first, forgetting about any of the details and really wanted to get the shape done right first. And this is really what I would recommend doing, especially if you go for a building which is so present, but also uh, completely detached from other buildings and you want to have a more complex shape uh, of since really I find it's much easier to just create a very simple structure of your building and look at it sort of from a mass study perspective where you can look how it's gonna sort of work in terms of scale with the rest of the area because I obviously didn't know that before I started building this building and how it might look in the end so really that's why, especially for buildings like these, I always want to place the walls first and place them in a very general shape and not add any details or even a roof to them. And only if you're actually 100% sure you want to go with that type of shape, start adding the roofs and floors and details to it. Which is also what I did in this case, especially since when it comes to the roofs, they are obviously quite simple. Um, I did change them from this right here since that looked much more Transylvanian than Bavarian. At least that's what I feel. Uh, so I didn't want to quite have that. But yeah, this is in general a pretty simple straightforward 4H roof and it's not going to really be much else really. Just want to add a couple more details to it, which you'll see later on in this video, but the only place where I'll really experiment a lot with a lot of detail on the roof is going to be the spire as that's definitely and generally where most of the attention is going to go when it comes to this building since it's obviously so central and by far the highest part of the building which sort of comes down to another small tip which I actually got from Leonidas way too long ago and I can't remember how long ago it was but a pretty important point about detail that the more detail a building has, generally, the better it is. But there's something which you kind of want to keep in mind, especially if you want to go for a style that doesn't seem overblown or fantasy-like, is that detail works best if it's unevenly spread around a building. So some areas with very heavy details and some areas with less detail. Uh, so for instance, Japanese buildings, I don't know why I'm coming back to this, but they have very detailed roofs, but way less detailed walls, especially if you look at their castles. And this building, for instance, but you'll see with many German buildings as well, is that they have actually not so detailed roofs, but a lot of detail on the walls. So you have all the timber work going on, or other details like the stone, which I have on the spire, uh, the tower over here and more decorated windows. So you want to sort of make sure that parts of the building are really detailed and other parts of the building are less detailed. Which is what I wanted to try in this case as well. And when it comes to details too, they tend to stick out or uh, stand out a lot less, of course, if you use the same color for all the details. Um, so while I use the same color, which is white, for all the brick details and details around windows, just to make sure that it wouldn't look too awkwardly, like there are too many different colors. I still want to get uh, a good contrast in this building, which is why one of the reasons why I made the wooden frameworks red and that very dark shade of red, because it so much sticks out from the white and it's such a beautiful contrast from how light the rest of the building is. And especially in the case of that little balcony on the little protrusion there, it really makes the balcony stand out a lot more from the rest of the building since you can really have that contrast between the white details and on the other hand the very dark red frameworks of wood. And the same sort of goes for the horizontal beam with which the roof ends which is like a very visible clear demarcation of the wall ends here and the roof is gonna start here 
and I like that actually in this. And another important point was also that I wanted to make the bottom floor, so the one with all the wooden arches, quite a lot darker, uh, which is why I used grey instead of white than the top floor, just to make sure that there is this clear distinction between what's the base of the building, which is grey, uh, sort of has a darker stone-ish texture to it, and the top of the building, which is very light and has a very um, clear stucco texture to it. And then the very top of the building, near the roof, where the very dark red framework is going on. Uh, <laughs> I make things sound way more complicated than they actually are. It's just a simple timber building, really. Uh, but that's the general idea that went behind it. And what I also found, especially in this case, is if you have these little bits of larger building left, and you need to place a roof over them, just go crazy with the roof and place it into different directions and maybe add little spires and things sticking out because nothing is more boring than a flat roof especially in the case of such a building which isn't too large a flat roof makes it seem smaller than it really is which is also um, what these 4H roofs help with a lot to actually make the building seem quite large where in reality this building isn't that large in the end Oh, and when it comes to the timber frames, there's really not too much that I can say about that. Especially when it comes to the timber frames, I really just took a lot of inspiration from real life buildings. And I would say it's not really a bad thing to do so in this case, since I just wanted to make sure that the general patterns that I have in the wood are quite similar to what you see in real life. So it's really just a mixture of horizontal beams, vertical beams, and some slanted diagonal beams, and there is a load of different variations of this, but generally you don't find um, that many places where you have multiple degrees of slanted beams, so it's really just straight, horizontal, and one... Um, it's about 60 degrees usually, I think, where these slanted beams had to, but don't go too overboard with the stucco, is basically the most important thing, don't get too many different degrees or inclines of the wooden beams. And also don't be afraid to sometimes just completely skip over the diagonal or inclined beams since sometimes buildings with the um, timber frameworks really just have horizontal and vertical beams. Which actually the uh, real life Theresian Stein castle that which I very much inspired this building on actually doesn't really have any diagonal beams aside from just a couple of triangles, so it's definitely something that you do see. But yeah, in general this building, it's not that spectacularly innovative or much anything new, but it's really all about the detail. Uh, so I won't even be done with this building, far from it, in this episode alone. And it's really mostly going to be uh, sort of impressive as a building, as it stands out a lot in detail from the rest of the buildings as well. Which is probably also something that I may want to note about the fact that it's a weenie, is that uh, especially how much this building is uh, very present in this area, it also has just a higher level of detail than the buildings around it, which are much simpler, and of course don't go out of their way to have all of these different uh, stone details, like multiple corner bricks and all the pillars and arches decorated like that. Now in the front of the building, I wanted to add the staircases just to make it seem a little bit more like it's a palace. And it is a bit over the top and overblown for a theme park, I'd have to say. it's. But I do like the way in which it at least connects the building to where the future plaza is going to be. And having these staircases is also a really good excuse for just having another road which is going to interact with the water a bit and another road which sort of curves around this area and then you still have that area in between these staircases which I want to decorate in the future with some sort of foliage like I think I'll just have flower beds over there which is also a lot of fun to do. So yeah, while they are a bit over the top perhaps I really just wanted to have them here to make this area in general feel a bit more connected to the palace and not just feel like the palace is its own sort of thing detached from the rest of this area. From a theme park perspective though, it's <laughs> really not that necessary. I guess in a way the um, palace could just be something cool to look at, but these staircases aren't actually going to be the functional exit or entry. 
I will have the entrance and the queue go into the back of the building just for the reasons that it allows for a very long queue that sort of winds around and interacts with the coaster in the future and connects to this plaza eventually and have a exit right here at the front of the building where you can just ride out, exit it, have a nice overview actually of the rest of the German area and just take a couple of steps and you're back into the park. So yeah, that's the general idea of how this is going to work with a coaster. I realize I haven't talked about the coaster itself yet, and that's actually because I have no idea what I'm really going to do with the coaster. And that really means, well, I, I think I am going to make it a mine train. That is most of what I know about it, but I have no idea how I'm actually going to plan it. I want to have a small mountain around the other side of the river and have the coaster go through that. But really, what type of CF CTR I'm going to use for it and what type of layout I want to go for, <laughs> I'm really not sure about. It'll be a type of family like Mine Train Coaster, much like Thunder Mountain, just German slash Austrian themed. What I might actually do, though, is have a small castle at the top of the mountain, just because it feels like it might just be a missed opportunity if I don't do so. But even that, I am not too sure about. So when I head back into this area after I finish the plaza and queue, um, I really have to get my acts together and think a little bit more about what I do want to do with this area. So until I really have a solid plan, I'm actually not going to touch it either. Uh, especially since right now this area is already quite well planned. And in general, I don't really want to quite ruin that. Anyway, just a few pictures which I thought I'd add before we actually go on. Uh, keep in mind though, these are still a bit of a work in progress. I definitely still need to add all the foliage around it, of course, which really should help making it stand out more. Um, flowers in front of it, some details like the general signs of life, um, some street lights around it, some benches, some planters, especially on that little uh, floor which is raised above these stone arches. It would be really good to have some planters over there and maybe some smaller details that I'll get to in the future and I'm not quite sure how and what I'll do with them. But yeah, this is basically the basic building and in the next episode I'll be working on making the plaza in front of it with a small flat ride and maybe start work on the queue and more of this area with some rock work and foliage as well of course. So thank you guys for watching and auf Wiedersehen.